All right, so I don't know if you guys ever played around with a uh, chemistry set when you were a kid. I know it's not the 1930s. Chemistry sets aren't exactly all the rage these days. But growing up, my cousin David, he had a chemistry set. And for the record, he did have normal toys too. He didn't just have a bunch of toys from the Great Depression. Hey, you guys want to play with my Tinker Toys? I got this stick and a hoop that we can have fun with. So we're in his room and we uh, crack open this chemistry set and we're over there with our beakers and our test tubes looking like a Nickelodeon version of Breaking Bad. There's all these vials of chemicals included, and we don't know anything about chemistry. And we're sure as hell not gonna read the instructions like some kind of loser. Look, I've watched a couple episodes of Beekman's World, alright? I practically have my PhD in chemistry, for Christ's sake. You can't even pronounce the names of uh, half the chemicals we're using. Potassium pa... Oh boy, uh, pama... Pama... Pomegranate. Potassium pomegranate, yeah, that's it. Sounds pretty tasty. Gulp, gulp, gulp. So, we decided to do what any kids would do, and we mixed all the chemicals together in one beaker. I'm not sure what we were trying to accomplish. We're about to find a cure for cancer with this $12 chemistry set. No, we sure as hell didn't make that. But what we did make was the color blue. Ooh, fancy. We're breaking some new ground here. Somebody publish us in a scientific journal. Ladies and gentlemen, I've gathered you all here today to announce that at our state-of-the-art laboratory, also known as David's Bedroom, we have figured out how to create the color blue. Oh my god. They're geniuses. Somebody get them a medal. So there we are, standing there with our blue concoction. We're not really sure what to do with it. Maybe if we drink it, we could turn into an X-Men. Yeah, or maybe we'll get diarrhea for a week. Not really something I want to gamble on. So we get bored with it, and we take our stupid blue potion and just dump it out in the middle of David's driveway. Well, imagine to our surprise that this puddle of blue starts to stain the driveway. So David starts flipping out because uh, his dad's going to be home from work soon. He's gonna get home, see this big-ass blue stain in the driveway, and he's gonna lose his goddamn mind. Wait, Dad, I can explain! Because David's dad loves his driveway. His favorite room in the whole house was the garage. And the driveway is like the front yard of the garage. He wants to keep it looking nice. There's one time we were shooting bottle rockets down the driveway like a couple of assholes. And David's dad came out and yelled at us. But he didn't yell at us for shooting bottle rockets at people's houses. No. He yelled at us because we were doing it in his precious driveway. Oh, what the hell? Don't be doing that in the driveway. Go blow your hands up in the street or something. So at this point, David goes and gets the garden home and he starts spraying the blue puddle with water. But this doesn't help, it just spreads it around. Now the whole goddamn driveway's blue. Holy hell, David, you are gonna die. Your driveway's smurf blue, for Christ's sake. It's a pretty unique color for a driveway. Makes a pretty great landmark if you're giving somebody directions to your house. So when you turn down that street, just uh, keep going until you see the uh, stupid-ass cotton candy blue driveway. You really can't miss it. So in sheer panic, David runs in his house and grabs a bottle of dish soap off the counter. Now both of us are on all fours in the driveway with a bottle of palm olive scrubbing away like little orphan Annie but this isn't working either and you know why because dish soap works on dishes not on blue driveways it even says on the bottle for Christ's sake well what the hell are we supposed to do now maybe we can camouflage it somehow you know just like uh, park a bunch of bikes and scooters out there maybe set the bushes on fire that'll draw his attention right nope too late David's dad pulls up in front of the house we just stand there in the front yard accepting our fate David's over there he's got a blind fold on and a cigarette hanging out of his mouth. His dad walks up. He takes one look at us and then he looks over to his stupid aquamarine driveway. Then he looks back at us and he's like, David and the boys. What are you guys doing out here? Uh, nothing. You guys want some hot dogs? Uh, yeah, hot dogs sound good. All right, I'm gonna make some hot dogs. And then he just walked away. He never said anything about the driveway. What the hell was that all about? He's seen the driveway, right? There's no way you can miss it. See this damn thing from outer space. What the hell happened? Maybe David his dad just didn't feel like dealing with our bullshit that day. Or maybe he just wanted some hot dogs. I don't know. But what I do know is David's driveway did turn back to normal after a couple of days. It didn't turn into some stupid national landmark like we thought it was gonna. It's amazing! Take my picture with it! So David probably knocked 10 years off his lifespan that day from sheer anxiety, thinking he was about to get murdered by his own dad. But instead, we got to eat hot dogs. Get your red hots. Talk about a happy ending. BrewStew.com